That bill has been set down for first reading. The House now comes to oral questions. The first question is in the name of the Honourable <coughs> Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A question to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her statements and actions? Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf, the right, Honourable Winston on behalf of the Prime Minister, yes, in their context. When she said in Parliament yesterday, quote, the Minister of Foreign Affairs made it clear that the action the government has taken was on the advice of the NZSIS, who also acted in conjunction with our Five Eyes partners in the advice they provided this government, end quote. Which particular Five Eyes partners advised the NZSIS on this matter? Uh, first of all, the statement that we acted on the advice of the NZSIS is totally correct that the NZSIS at the time and to Foreign Affairs had intimated that Five Eyes Partners understood New Zealand's situation as being possibly different to their own because of the character and shape and size of the Russian Embassy in this country. That was as clear as daylight. So those statements are totally correct. When she told Radio New Zealand yesterday that following SIS advice, that there were, quote, no Russians who qualified for expulsion, end quote, but then said, quote, I've now asked MFAT to advise me on whether there are people who should be the subject of visa exclusions for New Zealand, end quote. How does she reconcile that with the statement of her Foreign Affairs Minister yesterday, quote, we don't take knee-jerk reactions on this side of the House, end quote. <laughs> Very, very, very easily. <laughs> the, re the reality is, and if I go, can go through this very slowly, the NZSIS statement was as to those within the Russian embassy. But it went on to say, the NZSIS, that of course there, is, there are possible intelligence agents outside of that embassy, in, in effect that's what they were saying, and we have taken action against them in the past and will continue to do so. That's a clear distinction that is not being understood by that member. Which criteria will be used to determine which Russian citizens should be subject to travel sanctions? Criterion, but go on. Well, first of all, um, not the same perhaps criteria that was in place in 2014, where there was a visa ban against certain Russians but they were never told. So in short, if they were coming out of Siberia, if Ivan decided to come out of Siberia to New Zealand, he only found that he was on the list when he made an application for a visa. How would that help anybody but just be a, to a tokenistic measure? When she was provided advice that there were no Russian, quote, undeclared intelligence officers, end quote, operating in New Zealand, what criteria was followed in reaching that determination? Well, first of all, as any uh, minister in charge of our security services would know, there are certain uh, actions and uh, protocols and procedures which we cannot disclose as ministers. Otherwise, we subvert the very security that we seek to enhance in our country. And I'd ask that member and her colleagues for the first time for a long time to show some responsibility. Doesn't exist. Does she really believe that there are no Russian spies gathering intelligence in New Zealand? <laughs> I think the Prime Minister and her Foreign Minister made it very clear yesterday that we admitted the possibility to the second uh, category and that's why we said so, with, of course, the authority of the NZSIS. But then again, we don't lose our um, diary or geographical maps on the way to order, the airport. Order, order. <laughs> question number two, Dr Liz Craig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what does Treasury's 2018 investment sta statement say about the condition of the public health estate? Just, be just before the question is, uh, is answered, I am going to add um, two extra questions uh, to the National Party as a result of two members uh, of the Labour Party interjecting during that question. Mr Speaker. 
the Honourable Grant Robertson. Mr. Speaker, the 2018 and 